I'm studying shark behavior in fine scale to try to see what sharks are doing uh, when they are in the natural habitat that in the, this area between mainly between the migration. Mm -hmm. All right. And what tools are you using to do this? Your tool is a little unique in shark behavior research. Yes, we're using uh, mini ROVs, which are remotely operated vehicles. It's about 30 centimeters little submarine that we control from the boat. Mm -hmm. So many people that observe shark behavior use scuba divers in the water, and we've heard several times during this conference that that can present some biases. What, what sort of problems can you run into when you're using scuba-based observation of shark behavior? Yeah. The, the main problem when you're using scuba diving is that you have the impact of the observer. So when you're there diving with the sharks, you're impacting in what the sharks are doing. So usually we recommend for someone that is going to go to some shark dive is to remain calm, uh, use the less amount of uh, oxygen that you can use, release less bubbles, making less noise, and even your heartbeat to try to be calm to reduce your heartbeat. Cause Sharks can sense it and then they can change their behavior. Mm -hmm. And other other people use fixed cameras, cameras that are just either located on the shark itself, in the case of a yes. critter cam, or sharks or cameras that are mounted on the reef itself. What problems can you run into with that sort of? Yes, the problem with these cameras is that you actually can't follow the shark. You have this uh, just this right angle when you're looking at it, so you have this shark uh, passing through the camera. And you have just that angle of vision. So usually what you want to see is something that is outside of that camera. Mm -hmm. So you, have art. you need lots of cameras or you need something to move the camera. So that's where the ROV is. And these ROVs, uh, how deep they, can they go? Uh, they have different ROVs, different depth range. The common depth range is around 150 meters deep. All right. And... When you, when you originally tested these to observe shark behavior, did the sharks react to them in any way? Uh, different species can react in a different way to the ROV. Um, I have been working on bull sharks, uh, grainer sharks, leopard sharks, dusky sharks, manga, and uh, these ones haven't uh, shown any interest to the ROV as an ROV. Some come and look as uh, this new fish swimming around, but don't even all right, and you're able to get relatively high quality video from this. Yes, yes, our ROV has a really good uh, video cameras, have high quality images, so it's really good even for photo identification of the sharks. And what what is photo identification? What can you do with that with that sort of technique with uh, with the species that you're studying? The photo identification for us, you can identify individuals between this population. So, like grainer sharks, they have little dots through their bodies, and then there are softwares that recognize the position of these dots. So, you identify uh, the individual, and then it would be good for us to see what actually this individual does in a period of time. All right. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to say about your research, or about grainer sharks, or the possible applications of these small ROVs to behavior research? Yes. Um, we're looking to see not just for the actual behavior of the shark on a fine scale as we're doing compared to uh, the use of areas by scuba divers or um, boating activities, but as well to see populations of sharks that we know they are in deep waters and uh, it's complicated to set divers there to actually see what the sharks are doing. So that would be a really good tool for that.